Hello Internet! Today I'm going to show you how to upgrade your prawn suit and how each upgrade module works. Before you get started, you'll need to build a vehicle upgrade console inside of your moon pool. If you don't know where to find the blueprint for that, check out the link in the video description. Let's start with the modules that fit both the prawn suit and the Seamoth. The energy efficiency module reduces your power usage by 15%. This means a maximum of 60% improvement with 4 modules. As such, it works the exact same way as it does for the Seamoth. The hull reinforcement module also works the same way in theory, however, in practice, this module is useless for the prawn suit, so just don't use it. I made a whole video about it if you want the details, I'll put the link in the video description. The storage module adds a row of 6 storage spaces to the prawn suit's standard storage of 24. With 4 such modules, you'll get a maximum capacity of 48 storage spaces. You can find one module inside of the prawn bay of the Aurora. Use a fire extinguisher to remove the flames to obtain the module. Now to the prawn suit specific upgrades. The depth module Mark 1 increases the suit's crush depth to 1300 meters from 900 meters. You can upgrade the module to Mark 2 using the modification station, increasing your crush depth further to 1700 meters. The jump jet upgrade module increases the power of the thrusters, giving them a greater acceleration and a longer lasting boost. It does not stack, so no sense in using more than one. The thermal reactor recharges the power cells of your prawn suit when the ambient temperature is above 35 degrees C. Of course, it's most useful in hot areas and areas with a lot of geysers. Finally, there are the different arm modules. The icons for those have a purple background instead of the usual blue. As you probably have guessed already, they are used to replace the prawn suit's standard claw arms. Also, they're not unlocked by default, like the other modules. You have to find the blueprints of each arm before you can make them. The drill arm allows you to mine large resource deposits and places the obtained resources directly in your prawn suit storage. It's the only way to mine those deposits. If you're in a hurry, you can also equip a drill in both arms for some rock double fisting. Watch this video if you're looking for drill arm fragments. The grappling arm can be used to hook onto a solid object and pull the prawn suit towards it. As such, it increases the prawn suit's mobility. Watch this video if you're looking for grappling arm fragments. The propulsion cannon arm acts as a bigger batter version of the regular propulsion cannon. It can be used to lift and propel a variety of objects and creatures. It also has the ability to take items from the prawn suit's storage rather than the player's storage. Watch this video if you're looking for propulsion cannon fragments. The torpedo arm allows your prawn suit to fire torpedoes. Each arm can be loaded with 6 torpedoes and can fire 2 torpedoes in rapid succession. There are two types of torpedoes you can make in the vehicle upgrade console's fabricator. The vortex torpedoes immobilize creatures to help you make a getaway, and the gas torpedoes create clouds of gas to poison creatures. Unlike the Seamoth torpedo system, you will not lose torpedoes if you remove a torpedo arm while it's still loaded. Watch this video if you're looking for torpedo arm fragments. Here are some combinations to consider. For mining trips, consider pairing your drill arm with one or more storage module to carry more loot. You can also equip both a drill arm and a grappling arm to get to hard to reach resource deposits. For maximum mobility, you can use two grappling arms and a propulsion jet upgrade. If you just can't choose, you can also put the different modules in the prawn suit storage and swap on the fly. Thank you all for watching. Let me know how you like to outfit your prawn suit in the comments section. If it's your Seamoth you want to upgrade, check out my guide for that vehicle instead. If you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe for more guides just like this one. I'll see you in the next video.